Welcome GRD121, or anyone using Gravit, who wants to be more familiar with the vectorize operation. And I've only used it for a little bit, and I struggled with it a little bit through our Halloween exercise that we use for class because I wasn't prepared for some of the issues that come up with some of the tracing. I'm familiar with illustrators somewhat, but not as much here because they don't really give you any options or settings, so you're kind of just guessing when the artwork comes in of what it's going to do. So let's try it out here. What I'm going to do is just put a rectangle on my page. So I'm just going to make a rectangle that fills up the page. This is an 8.5 by 11 page. And I'll stretch this out. And instead of being gray, I'll give it kind of a, maybe a green color, maybe like a, a little bit of a mint green color like that. So we can see what's transparent and what's not. And then we'll lock this. So we could put trace shapes on top of this. So let's try it out. And we'll go with the spooky silhouette kind of thing we were talking about on our Halloween flyer. Now here's one that's 300 by 300. It's a little low resolution. So you gotta remember when it's low resolution, you could pick up pixelated edges and things like that. So let's see what happens here. We'll just try it out. And, but it looks fairly clean and easy, so we'll copy it. And we'll go here and we'll just do a paste and we have to do a Command V. I'm on Mac, I'm doing Command V, so you do a Control V on Windows. And I'll just paste this in here and you can see it's not a very big image. And right off the bat, I'm just gonna do a trace. So I'm gonna do Modify path vectorize image and there it is now it doesn't really tell you it's done or anything other than it's not an image but what you can see over here that it's not an image anymore it's a group and before you start clicking on things and wondering what's there and I'll zoom in a little bit here so I could see it better and you can see there's kind of some weird lines and stuff I'm gonna open up the group and see what's there now there's two inner parts of the group. There's snow and black, and it seems like Gravit treats snow as the white areas and black as the shape, and black's probably what we want. So what we do is just look at it. There's the black, and it looks like the snow is the white area around it, because if you do that, that kind of removes the transparency. So what you could do on one like this is basically just click on this, and I don't know if I have to view it here, but click on the snow layer, and just hit the trash can and get rid of it. And then you have vector art here. And again, to be sure, just go to view and outline view and there's your vector artwork. If you click off it, you shouldn't see any box or anything around it and it looks all closed. It's all one closed path. And then I'll, I'll put it back so you can see the shape again. And then even over here, it's, it's a group, but there's only one thing here. So there's no reason to keep it grouped. So you could just click on this group and hit ungroup, which is this, or you could right click and choose ungroup. Now it's ungrouped and it just goes back to being a path. So it's just a tree here. And now that it's vector artwork, you could do all kinds of things with it. You could go in here and change the color. You can draw a rectangle on it sideways here. We did one thing where we highlighted two things. Now I'll, I'll make this rectangle a different color here. I'll make it a lime green. Then you can highlight these two shapes and you could do something like a subtract. And what will happen is the top shape will cut out and then you can essentially crop that. So if you had to crop that tree and put it against a border, something like that, you could do that. So that's a very simple path to do that. Now it's not permanent yet because it's still a compound shape, but you could, you could convert it into a path and now you just have a path there. So that's one way to do that. So again, the key is kind of looking inside here instead. I was saying that the key was to go here to the sub select tool and sometimes that helps but I think the key is going in and seeing what's inside here. So I'm gonna delete this and we'll just try some more. So I'm gonna go back here to spooky tree and here's one that looks like it's transparent. I'm gonna click on it. And this is typically what a ping image looks like because usually this gray and white checkerboard means transparency. Now what we found out sometimes that it's not always that way, especially when you come in here and you don't see the gray and white appear. It's like right there all the time and you even see it in the background. So sometimes you might paste it and it's still there. That means it's part of the image. So I'm gonna right click and copy this and I'm gonna come in here again and I'm gonna paste and use my keyboard to paste it. And this is what I was talking about. I'll zoom out a little bit. It's bringing in this gray and white background. So it's not really a transparent image. It's not really a ping. I'm not sure what it is. And you can see even it's not really good resolution either. So that's gonna give us some kind of poor quality. If we zoom in here, we could see it's very pixelated on the edges. So when it traces it, it may pick up some of that because it's kind of low resolution. But let's see what happens here. And it actually may not just be the low resolution. It may be because there's gray and white pixels behind there. But let's see what happens here. There's my image. I'm gonna to go to Modify, Path, Vectorize. And when I did this in our Halloween 
project, I, I kind of said, oh, we can't use this because it has the background. But again, I was trying to select things with the direct selection tool, but go into it. See what's here. Now, there's all these things here. Now, this might scare you off. You might look at this and say, oh, my God, there's like 50 layers of stuff here. And there is, but find out what you really want. And if you look at these things, there's kind of like they're all listed by color. You might see snow, you might see lavender, you might see like a dim gray. And I guess they're talking about all these background things. Now you could try to delete them manually, but what I'd recommend is go and find down to the bottom, go and find the black and kind of turn it off and on. Now that's what you want. You actually want that. So what you could do is go to these others and just delete them. I'm going to delete lavender and I'm going to delete snow. And then I'm going to just click above black and select that one and then kind of scroll up to the top and delete all of them. I'll get rid of all of these. There's a lot there and I'll hold shift and click on the top one. So they're all selected except for the one that's black at the bottom. See, that's not selected. All the other ones are selected. And now I'll hit the trash can. And now I have vector art. Now it's not great vector art because it was very pixelated. So you can see there's pixelated edges on it. But now we have vector art that you can that you can just click on and you can color. I believe if you go onto the path here, you can click on this and change the color, whatever you need to do, make it brown or something like that. And again, it doesn't need to be grouped because it's just one path. So if you right click here and say ungroup, now you just have a path and you could treat it like any other vector path. You could go in and edit anchor points, but guaranteed there's going to be a lot of extra anchor points that are trying to mimic the edges where there's like those pixels. So that's probably not a good image. But anyway, see going into here isn't that bad, even when you had lots of layers. So I'm going to delete this again. I'll go back to my pointer and just delete the whole image. And we'll try something else from the trees. And you know, just to see what happens. Uh, sometimes I'll look for ones that are a little more challenging in terms of our trees. Here's one that's 1300, so it's a fairly large size. And but there's like background and there's some um, copyright information in here. And again, I'm not telling you to use copyright images, but I'm just showing you how to trace this. So if you copy this, copy this image, we'll go back to grab it and I'll paste it again with my keyboard and I'll do command V or control V if you're on Windows. And there's our image and you can see there's some watermarks and things so that you don't just use this image. And we're not just using the image, we're actually going to trace it. We might modify it. That's the idea that you're going to modify it and kind of make it into your own. You're not just using copyrighted images. But what we're going to do is we're going to trace it. So we'll go modify path vectorize image and let grab it do its thing. Sometimes it takes a while. It's looking at all these. And now because it's a bigger image, it's making it bigger than the page. So I'm going to go here and rescale it and just kind of bring it onto our eight and a half by 11 page here. So it's smaller and then I'll zoom in. Now here's our image. Now again, let's just see what's inside here. There's black and transparent. That should be easy. Here's the transparent and here's the black. So let's get rid of the transparent. Just click on that transparent layer, hit the trash can, and then we just have this one here. Right click on group and say ungroup because we don't need a group. And there it is. And now you can go and color this and do it any way you want. You could give this any color you want. And now it's vector artwork. If you need to check, just go to view, outline view, and that's perfect. So that worked out pretty well. So that one worked nicely. And I'll just delete that. And I'll move on to the witches because we dealt with some witches. And there's some easy ones, some challenging ones. And like here's an easy one. So let me just click on this one and check out the resolution 466. It's a little on the small side, but it's a very simple image. So I'm going to right click on it, copy image. And I'll go here and I'll do a Command V because I'm on a Mac and paste it. Now this should be fairly easy to trace. So we'll go to Modify, Path, Vectorize Image. And there it is. And now if we go in our group, now we have all that stuff again. Now I'm not sure where all that's coming from, but all we want to do is look for the black one. And there's the black one. Now I guess it's picking up some artifacts on the edges. So if the black one is the one that you want, that's the artwork that you really want, instead of trying to un break it apart and get your direct selection tool, just select the layers you don't want. And you can hold shift to select multiple layers and then just hit the trash can here. And now with black on the bottom, I'll select everything above it. I'll select dim gray and then scroll up all the way and hold shift again and select that one and then hit the trash can. Now everything's gone. Now I'm just left with vector art here and you can ungroup this. And now you can change this to be any color that you want. 
and now it's vector art that you can modify any way you want. You could go in and use the freehand shape tool. You can cut into it or add things to it or anything you want. You can group it. You could crop it. You can edit the anchor points. You could do any of that kind of stuff to make it more of your own. So if you wanted to go in here and edit the anchor points and change her nose or do anything like that, you can certainly do that. Now let me delete that because that was an easier one. And we'll see if we have a little harder ones here. Here's one. And it has, looks like it might have some text on it. Now this is 325, so this is kind of low resolution. This may be an issue because it, it has text on the bottom, but also because it's low resolution. But let's try it out. I'll copy image, and I'll paste, and there it is. And you can see it's not very big because I don't have to scale it down or anything. And we'll just modify, path, vectorize image, and just go into the group and look for the black one. If that's the one you want, just turn it on and off and say, yeah, that's the one I want and then just go to all the other ones and hit the trash can and get rid of the ones that are behind the black or below the black and then select these go click on gray and then shift click on the other ones and hit the trash can oh now now we had a problem here so i'm going to undo that because we lost something here now there's something in here now we have to find where that is and there's usually they say snow when there's something white in here it says snow so it's hard to see what that is although if I click on this it's saying transparent so I want that so I'm gonna keep that I'll turn it on and off let me zoom into here just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit more I'll use my space bar so you can see there's some gray things here and there's some white things and that's probably the gray but we have transparent here and this one, if we click on this one, this is also transparent. Now, I don't think I want the gray ones unless you just kind of filled them with black. You might be able to unite them, but I think I'm just going to delete those ones right now. So I'm going to just turn them on and off, see if I want them. That one I definitely don't because it's not really doing anything. And let me check on this gray. Uh, it just looks like some pieces on the broom I don't need, so I'll delete that one. And here some pieces in the hair which I don't think I'd need so I'll delete that now I have these transparent things here now if I delete them they're gonna be black underneath but what you could do because they're actually shapes they're just paths if you look at them through here if you look at if you go to view outline view you could see their paths. now we know what we can do with those we just need to punch them out we know how to do that with subtract so we just have to punch them out with subtract so let's try that out we'll go back to view regular view here, we'll leave them white, and then we'll just basically highlight these two shapes. And what should happen is we should be able to punch these out if they're in front, and they should make a negative shape and make a hole. So let's see what happens. So I'll go up here to my compound shape tools, my operations, and go to subtract. And perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted that to basically punch out of there. So now when we look at our compound path, they're still here, but what we could do now is, I guess, click on our compound shape is whenever we have a compound shape if we convert to path it'll make it permanent so we will click here and make it permanent and now it's just one path and that's all we need it's perfect now we can go and change the color to anything else if we need so there we kept the shapes that are going to be knockout shapes because they're helpful to have so that wasn't bad to see there so that's our our shape and again it's like any other vector path now and I'm gonna delete it and let's look at another witch silhouette let's take a look at this one this one might be a challenge here so I'm gonna click on this one and this could be a challenge because it has this internal shape and it has a bat here and there's all these different shapes and there's even some watermarks so let's try this out let's copy this one copy image and we'll go here and I'll zoom out just a little bit and I'll paste it and I'll zoom out a little bit more and I'll leave it this size for right now and let's trace it modify path vectorize image and it's a little bigger than the page because it's higher resolution so I'm gonna grab on the corner here it's covering up our page so I'm just gonna hold shift grab the corner make it smaller and zoom back in so we could take a look at it so there it is and there we're seeing our group again and let's see what's here now this is actually pretty easy we don't have a lot of layers here we have snow snow and we have black so black we assume is going to be the black coloring and then snow we assume is going to be the background and actually there's no way we would want that background anyway so i'm going to get rid of that background snow just click on here and hit the trash can now there's this color here now you could keep it the reason i'm saying you could keep it is because this is a group right now 
you know, if you think of it a group. But if you ungrouped it, you could click on the white part and make that a color. So if you did want to make a graphic where you actually filled this with like a kind of a moon color, you could have it like that. So it's still a separate shape. You can, you know, if you, I don't know if this is separate right now. Oh, it is. So it's, I have it separate right now. So you can move it like that. You could see it's a separate shape. So we're just coloring it like that. So if you needed that color in there, you could do that. However, if you wanted that area transparent as well, you could just delete it. So then you could just delete it like that. Oh wait, no, you can't delete it. So what can you do? Well, we just did it last time. Remember, if this is a shape above it, which snow is, we could do the subtract. So if you wanted that transparent and you weren't making it a separate color like it is now, although you might, you can highlight these two shapes, the snow and the black, and go to your compound operations here and just do subtract. And now it's separate. Now you have one shape, make sure that we do and now remember it's a compound shape because we didn't make it into a path yet if we make this thing into a path then it'll just be one path now it's just one path now when we change the color no matter what we change it to it's just going to change that vector shape there and it doesn't have anything there that's a negative shape so i think those are all the the options maybe i'll try just one more option here that's a little more challenging just to see what to do with a more challenging option Let's try this one. This one has this eye stock imagery. You know, it has watermarks all over it. So that's going to be a problem. But let's just try it out. I'll copy it. What's the worst case scenario? <laughs> we don't use it. So let's copy that and let's bring it here and we'll paste it and we'll trace it. Now, again, before we do all this, what would be a better solution? Well, taking it into Photoshop or somewhere, because it is a bitmap image, and maybe filling in all those areas. It'd be easier to fill in the areas like with a paintbrush instead of trying to trace them and then fix them after the fact, because some of these are, are going to show up. I think they're going to they're gonna come up separate here. But let's see what happens with some of this stuff here. I'll zoom out, and we could look at our group over here and see what we're dealing with. And there's a lot of stuff here. And, wow, there's a lot of layers. And again, you could just start seeing what's there. We definitely don't need the transparent layer. And I could delete that by going to the trash can so we could get rid of that. This one here, I'll click twice on there. That is transparent. And that's definitely one you would want because it's kind of inside the shape. So I might even double click on here and just call it like, you know, arm or something, you know, arm inside or something. Just so you knew it's one you want to keep because they all have these same names here. And then everything else, I don't know if you necessarily need if you click on these. And it's going to be really hard to get rid of these. So I think what I'm going to do here is just get rid of everything. I'll hold shift. I'll click on this one and I'll scroll up and I'll go up to, I can't even find my arm inside. So I think I'm going to just have to go through a couple here and just delete and go through a couple here. Because I don't see arm inside anywhere that I made. So I'm just going to keep going through here. Unless I find it. Oh, there it is. I see my arm inside now. I couldn't find it in this long list. So there's arm inside. So I'm going to delete everything above arm inside. And there's a lot of layers here. Or paths, I should say. And then I'll delete all of those. So now what we have is we have these two things. So you could highlight these two. And you could do that subtract. And that'll make that a hole. And then you could make it a path. Now the problem is you have all this stuff. So you could go in with this. Now I just started using this tool as well. But if I zoom in here and go down to some of these places down here, you know, you could fill this in. You could really get this freehand shape tool, this freehand shaping tool, and, and kind of just draw around areas here, kind of just draw around. Now I should put a stroke on here so you see it better, but you could go around and just fill in areas that are cut out, or you could edit the anchor points, but some of these things you, you could kind of fill in. You could draw a shape that kind of goes through it and goes through here and goes around and kind of fills it in. So you could do that. You, I Like I said, I think it would be easier to kind of use a paintbrush and do it as a bitmap image first and then bring it in if you wanted to trace it. So that's just some of the things I wanted to bring up here. Again, it's a compound path, so everything is, is fine right now. It's still vector. You could still change this whole thing to a different color if you want. It's just it was a lot more work to do that. So again, 
this vectorize or auto trace it isn't perfect you know it, it depends on what you're working with that's why we were working with silhouetted backgrounds but the idea is to get it a simple vector path that's a whole idea and you know you might have to do some work to fix this whether you do it ahead of time or you do it after you could but at least now we're dealing with one path so again the, the auto trace or the vectorize as they call it here is not the easiest thing in the world it's not going to be perfect for you because it's a it's computerized it's only going by the pixels it doesn't know exactly what you want it doesn't know what a witch looks like and all that so so that's what we're dealing with but hopefully that makes things easier to almost not mess with any of the tools up here direct selection tool and just look at the paths and just try to delete the stuff you don't want and keep the stuff that you do want and then if you ever have to look at it just go into outline view and just kind of make sure it's what you want so hopefully that helps a little bit with working with this vectorize kind of operation, this auto trace operation in Gravit. Hopefully that helps a little bit more.